So our next story also has to do with space in our universe. And it was really interesting because we have two guys that are really known in the tech industry to be among the most prolific in the world with Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos talking about space. Of course, in our, in our previous segment, we're talking about the footage released by the Department of Defense or to the Stars Academy through the Department of Defense and the UFO and being featured on mainstream news with the Tucker Carlson 8 p.m. slot, of course, on Fox News and um, the interview and everything else. So I, I love this stuff because I want to explore and uh, we're a pretty funny bunch because we're very aggressive and we really turn a lot of things into fear and we also hide a lot of things and all kinds of stuff. I'm talking about humanity, right? All of us. So, um, but another interesting story that came out this past weekend, uh, Elon Musk speaking at South by Southwest, which is the conference in uh, Austin, Texas, projects Mars spaceship will be ready for short trips by the first half of of 2019, which is crazy. That's like next next year. Uh, Elon Musk had a surprise question and answer session at the South by Southwest Festival in Austin, Texas on Sunday. The billionaire said SpaceX is on track to send his Mars intended rocket on short trips by 2019, but joked about potentially missing the timeline. And, you know, of course, Eddie Bravo, who was on the biggest podcast ever, which was with Joe Rogan and Alex Jones. He was talking about, listen, Elon Musk is a guy who was funded by the government. He gets a lot of money from the government. He was actually a computer programmer. And, you know, Elon Musk does speak out about artificial intelligence, which I like, or he, he warns us about it. He said it could be like summoning the demon. It could be what, uh, you know, people talk about when they talk about what is satanic. But at the same time, his company, I think it's called Neuralink, they want to actually, I think, connect the internet to your brain, like a company he, he recently bought or bought within the, couple, the past couple of years or became heavily involved in. So um, there appears to be possible, uh, possible conflict there. So let's actually play this video now. And this is on CNBC's website. Okay, this is basically this is basically one of those videos with a lot of text. Um, so it goes on to say in this article that basically Elon Musk said that um, a flight will cost less than the initial Falcon One flights, which Musk pegged in the five to six million range. He's talking about SpaceX's BFR rocket system. Which, is, which are expected to have capabilities for interplanetary travel and be fully reusable. And he goes on to talk about that uh, he wants to, they want to send a cargo mission to the Red Planet by 2022. SpaceX's ultimate objective is to plant the seeds to put a human colony on Mars. By the way, some people think we've already had one on Mars. I don't know not according to mainstream uh, education and news, but they could be wrong about some other things. Who knows, right? Um, he talks about what uh, Mars needs in the immediate term. Mars will need glass domes, a power station, uh, an assortment of basic living fundamentals, after the infrastructure is complete, then really the explosion of entrepreneurial opportunity will begin because Mars will need everything from iron foundries to pizza joints, right? It's pretty funny. In a wide-ranging series of remarks, Musk uh, told the audience about his other ventures, including Tesla, the Boring Company. And again, with Tesla, does, does Musk, and I like they're creating electric cars, it's great, but I haven't heard him talk about free energy with Nikola Tesla and what that could do for the world if we actually followed through with what Tesla was working on when J.P. Morgan apparently pulled the financing because you couldn't put a meter on it and bill people for the energy. So they just canceled the project. And with free energy, not electric cars, but free energy, 
um, we would actually, again, have no poverty at all. We could end poverty completely and end the contr control structure of money. Now, maybe he can't say that because he's playing ball with the government. Maybe he doesn't want to say it. Maybe he's just a figurehead like some of our, our presidents or some would say all of our presidents. I don't know, but he's got to know this exists, and I haven't heard him talk about that. I, and also, he wants to put Wi-Fi uh, around the earth, and we're, we're kind of finding now that there could be some problems with um, definitely cell phones, and it seems to me the frequencies put out by Wi-Fi, especially 5G, are quite chaotic, are quite chaotic, meaning, in my opinion, they could... Um, they could kind of make us angrier. Uh, definitely, there have been mainstream studies talking about effects with cell phones causing cancer. And uh, so I'm not sure about sort of covering the earth in Wi-Fi completely. It seems like maybe that's a, a frequency range where we're going to put a chaotic frequency completely over the earth. So we continue to fight each other instead of looking into things like Russian pyramid research where... They created these structures and it made it harmonious for everybody. Uh, well, excuse me, harmonious around the pyramid. They went from uh, to mainstream universities. They took premature babies that were going to die, took them into the pyramids, for example. They studied what it did to their cells. Uh, I think many of them or all of them survived. But they did a lot of scientific studies that you can look into and and sort of in my opinion it's because it harmonizes everything around it and we need to talk about frequencies that can do that and i don't hear elon musk or anybody else talking about that maybe he can't maybe maybe you know he's kind of uh he's not able to right for some reason because he feels threatened or something else so uh but i think this was a really cool article I like that he talked about putting pizza joints on Mars. It's interesting that it was coming just next year. He said that, you know, his timelines are sometimes a bit off, but that was really interesting. Another interesting thing that came out was Jeff Bezos saying he'll spend his Amazon lottery winnings on space travel. Of course, uh, you've seen that Jeff Bezos is now either the richest man in the world officially, by the way, they probably are people what in the Middle East that are maybe more wealthy that we don't hear about. But Jeff Bezos is worth what a hundred billion dollars or something with Amazon. And so he came out and he also has a, you know, Elon Musk has a SpaceX. Jeff Bezos has um what is it? Blue Planet or Blue something or other. Blue Origin. So he says that he wants to make space travel as dynam dynamic and entrepreneurial as the internet. The price of admission to space is very high, he said, uh, Saturday night in New York, accepting the Buzz Aldrin Space Exploration Award at the Explorers Club annual dinner. I'm in the process of converting my Amazon lottery winnings into a much lower price of admission so we can go explore the solar system. He's eating this lizard in this picture. I don't know. It, it try. It looks, that looks, you know, listen, I'm vegan for five. I had a lot of meat, so, but I don't know. It's, it's a weird picture to me. I'm looking at Jeff Bezos eating this iguana and I'm thinking, man, I don't know about that. You know, somebody like David Icke might say this picture is sort of, you know, David Icke is talking about reptilians and, and beings that influence, influence us we can't see. And of course, we can't see so much of the visible light spectrum. We can only see a fraction of a percent. I say this all the time. And I, I actually heard about that from David Icke, but he heard about it from scientists. It's mainstream science. He didn't make it up. Um, and, you know, I don't know. Talks about the reptilians and different beings that are influencing us. And then you see Jeff Bezos literally eating an iguana. And you kind of think, man, this is... Uh, I don't know, but we can send love to Jeff Bezos and hopefully that helps, right? Because I need it too. I certainly am not perfect. So I don't know what's going on with Jeff Bezos. I really have no idea. But all I know is these people that are putting billions into rocket travel and then we just have, um, you know, footage from the Pentagon, from the Department of Defense. We talked about in our previous segment where 
There are things they're now discussing openly on mainstream news and interviewing former Pentagon officials that they're talking about genuine UFO footage. And these, these cases they're now talking about have gone back 50, 100 years. Do we really only know about rocket travel? Is that the only thing we, we are? I mean, are, come on now. Come on. I mean, so now all of a sudden, the military people that have come out, they're admitting that some of them are credible, that have seen different things, and they're well-trained to look at, you know, things that are flying, and they're they're able to, there's some outlet that it's legitimate, possibly, but, uh, and we've known about these cases, you know, there was what, Project Blue Book, where they tried to debunk anybody that said anything about UFOs. The government tried to debunk anybody. And now, you know, we have these billionaires and these tech guys, tech guys, because it's the tech that's allowed, right? <laughs> it's the tech that we're willing to show you. But so we have these tech guys and they're putting billions into rocket travel because if they told you that we had other technology that were literally, they're now admitting that could be true and flying around on earth, um, well, then the whole game would be up because nobody would need money. Nobody would need to be in poverty. Nobody, be, nobody would be limited to what they're telling you the technology is. So we can't have that, right? So we need to only, we need to have companies where they're building rockets and, you know, very fast rockets, but rockets so we can, and by the way, what do the rockets run on? Well, they run on oil. So that's okay. It doesn't rock the boat too much, right? I think I, I'm pretty pretty positive. I don't think there's an electric rocket, right? Uh, I think they're running on oil, so that kind of keeps everything in line. And it's just a thought, you know. Listen, I could be wrong, but um, maybe maybe there's more to the story. So, but listen, I like the progression nonetheless because nothing's perfect. I'm sure there are reasons why they they believe they have to do this and everything else. And uh, Bezos later declined to clarify just how much of his fortune he'll spend on space travel. But uh, a guy next to him, Paulson, said that Bezos could spend it all if he leaves enough to take care of his mother. So um, it goes on to talk about Jeff Bezos. So the final part of this story that I want to talk about or sort of a string of stories along along the lines of space. And then we're going to get into some world news. Um, this was another interesting one I saw on Yahoo. The moon is going to get its first mobile phone network. So this is a Reuters story out of Barcelona. I thought this was interesting. I want to hear what the, the flat earth people have to think about all this. And you know what? I made a joke a year and a half ago that there was still a flat earth society. And I thought it was crazy that that even like it was a joke, like basically like, well, you know, there's still a flat earth society. So, you know, I mean, anything's possible. People can be really unintelligent. And then over the past year, this flat earth thing, we had Mark Sargent on, who's one of the top flat earth guys. I listened to Eddie Bravo on the Joe Rogan podcast. I saw Eddie Bravo in person uh, in Las Vegas recently, the past couple of weeks. It was really cool. But, um, you know, you start to listen to it and there's a lot of stuff that's strange, like the fact that we can't go to Antarctica, that the GPS doesn't work well in the Southern Hemisphere. And, you know, it goes on and on. And some of it, some of it is like, you know, maybe. And then some of it's like, yeah, that's strange. We, it would be very easy to debunk all these guys. And then it was, it was completely funny. I got to pull up this picture and, uh, you guys saw this, but the, the SpaceX spaceman, when Elon Musk went, you know, they, they just launched this thing. They put a car into space and here's the picture right here. I mean, you tell me if that looks real to you. Uh, that looks, uh, you know, see this. Our YouTube viewers can see this picture. It's a car for our listeners that believe Android.com or believe iTunes.com. Believe iTunes.com will get you to iTunes. But 
It's a picture of a, a real car. Most A lot of people have seen this, but some people have no idea what I'm talking about. Elon Musk, they launched the SpaceX rocket. They had a live launch. It was like a big production with a bunch of people like the NASA stuff from the 80s and, uh, you know, people in the control room and everything else. And then they put this thing into space. And by the way, a lot of people still don't know the, the pictures of Earth that we have like the, the picture that was on the iPhone 4 of Earth and a lot of the pictures, NASA admits they're, they're CGI, they're, they're composites, they're put together. It's not even the real Earth. A lot of people don't even know that still. I just learned that last year. Almost, I guess, all of the pictures of Earth, we've spent billions and billions, probably, I mean, who knows, hundreds of billions of dollars and we don't have one real picture of Earth. Like they couldn't turn one of those things around as it's going to Neptune or whatever, or take a picture. So I, it, it's bizarre. It's the what I mean is you have so many of these things, and then like yeah, like you have like NBA player Kyrie Irving's like yeah, the Earth is flat. You've got people saying the Earth is flat. And then you got this picture of this car in space and the first thing Elon Musk says about it in the live press conference is, yeah, you know, uh, you know, it's real because it looks so fake, which could be true. It could be true, but it, <laughs> it certainly, it certainly doesn't help to dispel the rumors of the flat earth, uh, because, uh, it looks like, uh, a 1990s movie, but maybe that's why it is real. I don't know. I wasn't there. I wasn't on the car. There's some car now they launched and it's floating in space apparently. And maybe it's real, but NASA has done some strange, you know, you know, another thing NASA says it lost all the data from going to the moon, all of the flight records, everything. It just lost it. <laughs> <laughs> from all of it, all of it. There's a video. I mean, I play you enough things and I talk enough about everything um, on the show, but you can find the video of the guy from NASA saying, we just lost everything. We don't, we don't know where it is. We don't have it anymore. So there's some weird stuff. So, um, and nobody can go to Antarctica. You can, you can take this fake tour where you, you come to the tip, but you can't like, you can't go explore. Um, you can't go, you know, the, there's a treaty where all every country got together and said nobody can go to Antarctica and explore. You know, we're all like it's it's protected by the military, like every country agreed on that. So some people think there are ruins. I mean, there there's a story about ruins there. There's so much going on. So does that mean the Earth is flat? Does that mean we're on a bigger planet? The aliens are keeping us in this little pond? And then, you know, who knows, man? I mean, maybe not, but there's there's enough weird stuff where you start to ask questions. So I just think these stories are interesting. So getting back to this final part, the moon is to get its first mobile phone network. Assuming we're not on a flat Earth and it's just a lie, to get us to uh, have the military spend more money fighting things in space that could come. I don't know. Trillions and trillions of dollars that they, they already say they lost the Pentagon, right? So, But this was a cool story. Let's assume that it's real. And um, it's from Barcelona. The moon will get its first mobile phone network next year, enabling high-definition streaming from the lunar landscape back to Earth. Part of a project to back the first privately funded moon mission. And so people admit, uh, also these people that believe in the flat earth, that Mars turns. They admit that, um, you know, the moon, of course, doesn't. But uh, I guess scientists have reasons for that. Um, and it'll be and I guess you can see the space station from what I understand, but there's no footage there's no footage of like them docking on it or, or there's something, you know, there's a lot of footage, but then people have arguments. I don't know. People can argue about anything. So anyway, assuming the moon is real, it looks real to me, but assuming that uh, <laughs> we should get some good footage, right? Because um, a lot of the moon missions, I mean, it's pretty, 
it's pretty well accepted from a, a fair number of people that the moon missions, some of them were faked or all of them were faked. And um, it's not it's not accepted by mainstream science, but even like basically like like Joe Rogan, he will he will agree that a lot of the moon missions were faked by NASA. But I don't think he but he's not willing to say that like 9-11 was an inside job or uh, that the Earth is flat. He's not willing to say that. But some things like the moon missions, he will say that that's faked. So um, so I want to see what this footage looks like, because based on the SpaceX car floating out in front of the Earth, which, by the way, that Earth is round. I don't know if that's a composite shot where they made it look round or a fisheye lens or what their explanation for that round earth is. But all I know is ne there's nowhere in school you learned ever. There's nowhere I was told for the past 30 some years that those pictures of the earth I was looking at were fake, basically. And you can find the, the NASA guy talking about, you know, if you, if you Google this right now, NASA composite earth, the guy talks about that he's an artist. Let's see, you put CGI in there as well. Uh, NASA, Robert Simon, AKA Mr. Blue Marble. Yeah, this is the guy. And there's a video of him talking uh, that's on an official government website. And this guy's like, yeah, you know, I'm an artist and I do the best I can to put together, but I'm not an astronaut. So I just kind of, so he puts this image together. You get it on your iPhone 4 in 2006 and you're like, yeah, that's the earth. You know, I'm on the earth. Well, uh, no, dude, sorry. That's that's uh, that's a guy put that together. That's not. And they don't tell you. you <laughs> and that's what makes it strange. They don't tell you. You don't find out from NASA. You're just like. So then all of a sudden you're like, oh. Well, what else is going on? You know, what else don't I know? So, so what do you guys think about all this? I would love to hear your thoughts because I covered a lot. So leave a comment below on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash believe loves you or our website www.believe.love and let us know and let's get to the truth. Find basically what we want to help you do is to find your own truth and also to send love to this whole thing. I don't know what's going on exactly, but I do know there's a lot more going on than gets presented to everybody. And it could there could be agendas and different things, but we can try to harmonize it and get to the bottom of things and also, you know, understand that's just how humanity is. People do hide things. Uh, they have good reasons for it. We've hid things. People have ki kids. They hide things from their kids for a greater good, you know, and uh, not everything is hidden. Sometimes we're wrong. We think something's a conspiracy and it's not. Um, but there is a lot going on. That's for sure.